Hi, welcome to part two of my uh, intermediate uh, video tutorial series on uh, digital rendering skills. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you uh, a demonstration in Sketchbook Pro of a, of a sexy Italian sports coupe um, rendered in grayscale on a white background. So uh, as you can see here, I've got, um, uh, I've got my uh, warm-up sketches from the previous video series and um, uh, I've, I've selected one of these sketches to, to develop into a more finished rendering. So, um, so I have, uh, just to go over uh, with you, uh, I'm in Sketchbook Pro. Um, I've got my tools on the, uh, my brushes and tools on the left side. I've got uh, my layers on the right. Um, I can make all of that disappear. Um, I've got some additional functionality at the top of the screen. Uh, I'm using my iPad Pro. Um, although the, the basic principles um, uh, do, really do apply whether you're using Photoshop, uh, Sketchbook Pro on a PC, uh, Procreate, um, the, the, the same principles basically apply for all digital sketching. So uh, with that, <clears throat> um, I've selected uh, one of these sketches. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and scale that up to um, kind of uh, uh, highlight the one that I want to develop. I just thought this one had a nice, uh, confident look to it. Great proportion, good perspective. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and develop that one. Um, uh, one of the things that I'm going to continually do is, is um, flip the image back and forth. Uh, so then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dim this layer. So I'm going to turn down the opacity. Okay, so I'm just going to add a new layer by hitting the plus sign here. And I'm just going to do a quick uh, sketch overlay. Um, so uh, just this tool here, this is, this is a really convenient uh, tool for Sketchbook Pro. It, I've got my color selection here, which I'm mainly just going to be using black and white. And in today's demo, although I am going to get into a little bit of color at the end, uh, and I have my uh, pencil control. So if I, if I, if I tap on this uh, pencil icon and I slide uh, back and forth, right and left, uh, it changes the size of the brush. Uh, and if I go up and down, it changes the brush opacity. So I'm going to keep it around 50% opacity, keep it around one point uh, brush size. It's going to give me a nice, thin, controlled line. Um, I might actually turn up the opacity slightly. So there we go. Okay. So um, so then I'm going to just go ahead and, and uh, do a, a quick cleanup sketch. Um, so I'm just going to go over the original drawing with a, a, a still fairly loose but, but crisper uh, version of that drawing. Keep it, keep it fairly loose. Don't, don't, get too, um, don't get too caught up in perfection. I'm drawing those nice, confident eyes. Not angry or sinister. Also going to draw some uh, just light section lines across uh, various parts of the car, which is going to just, it's a it's sort of a roadmap for me to understand the overall uh, form and surface that I'm developing. Again, I'm trying to keep the sketch really loose, uh, not too precise. Um, everything will get tighter as, it, as the uh, rendering progresses. I'm going to put in a little indication of a, uh, a lamp internal as well. The next step um, is to uh, add another layer. Um, I'm going to reposition this layer um, underneath the main, uh, in the, underneath the sketch layer. So everything that I do, I'm going to keep the main sketch layer on the top. Uh, so the next layer is going to be what I, I call the graphic layer. These are going to be all the graphic elements like headlamps, um, the, the, the shape of the glass, the, the wheels and tires, um, any of the uh, air intakes and things like that that are going to be the main graphic elements of the design. So uh, I'm just going to grab a uh, a medium-sized brush. Um, I'm actually using the uh, technical pen here and I've just got it uh, blown up to the largest size because I just want a nice solid um, stroke. Uh, I'm also going to turn down the opacity slightly so I can see what I'm doing uh, with, with regards to the main uh, sketch. Uh, and I'm just going to go in and start um, blocking in these, uh, these graphic elements. I use the eraser tool to help you know, clean up some of the edges. So you don't have to worry about being too precise. You can see I keep rotating the, uh, the image around. And what that does is allows me to use the natural arc of my, uh, my arm 
thing I'm going to do also is I'm going to uh, just use the soft eraser and fade that bottom of that tire into the environment. Um, in this sketch, I'm not going to put a cast shadow under the car. Um, we'll go over cast shadows in a different uh, demo. Here we have uh, our graphic layer. And the next step is going to be to start to define the form. So uh, I'm going to go in with uh, using the airbrush and eraser. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to take some, uh, some of the opacity out of it, probably go to about 50%, and uh, grab my airbrush. Now, uh, when it comes to airbrush sizing, I, I, do, I, I constantly uh, in increase, grow, and shrink the airbrush. And, and the way I uh, do that, I, I see people do this all the time, where the, the, the airbrush comes out really lumpy and bumpy because people are using a small size airbrush and they're trying to model a large area. So um, I say that depending on the size of the surface that you're going after, um, uh, the best thing to do is you know, grow the brush to a, you know, for a larger surface and then shrink the brush for a smaller surface transition. So for example, I'm gonna use a larger size brush for um, the main, so some of the main, um, core line running through the vehicle. Um, so, the most important thing with, with rendering is that you're describing the form. And so what I'm, what I'm uh, brushing in right now is, is the sort of the, the ground tone of the body side and the front end. And you can see it's, it's, it's fairly undefined, it's fairly vague, so I'm gonna go in with a soft airbrush um, and I'm gonna tighten up that top edge a little bit. You can see, um, let me throw that a little bit. You can see I have, now I have a, a sort of a, a harder, stiffer uh, edge on the top of that core. And while I keep it very soft on the bottom. Um, same thing going into the rear fender. I'm gonna grow, I'm, I want this softer transition going into the rear fender and I want, I want that rear fender to sort of uh, transition outward and catch, catch oh. some. Um, I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to start bringing in a, a sky tone. Uh, I'm sort of rendering this as like a sort of an egg shape. Uh, so um, going back to my airbrush, I'm going to go in with a large area of sky tone. So if we remember from our rendering basics, uh, a car is, is reflecting its environment and there's, uh, there's a reflection of the ground and there's a reflection of the sky. And so, you, so, and along the horizon line is the um, highest point of contrast. So the sky tends to be darker at, directly above you, and the sky tends to be closer to a white at the at the horizon. Um, so you're going to have in your sky tone, you're going to have um, an area where where it's the darkest directly above you, but then it's going to fade back into um, a white. Um, and the reason why is because then the car is, 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 as you get to the farthest extremes of the vehicle, the vehicle starts uh, reflecting its environment again. So then I'm going to go in and, and start to define these surfaces a bit more. So I'm going to go in with a hard eraser. Um, I want this front fender to have some definition to it. So I'm going to erase a hard edge here and I'm going to go back in with, with uh, the airbrush, but a little bit smaller this time. And you find that that front fender. So that far side fender is going to catch some light uh, as it comes back towards the light source, while the near side fender is going to be reflecting towards the sky. I'm also going to take the opportunity for this this uh, main core along the front. I'm going to erase away part of that, which is going to give me a hot spot on the front corner of the car. There's also going to be a bit of sky showing on the rear fender. Just a little spot there. Okay, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is um, define a little more of this hood detail. Um, so I want to have this uh, surface which is, is depressed into the hood along that character line coming off of the this little triangular vent here. So. Uh, I'm just going to add a bit of a, a dark core here. Then I'm going to add a little bit of white and do the opposite. So on the far side, that, 
that edge is catching more light. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and define that edge a bit more crisply here. Now on the near side, <clears throat> it's, it's heading back toward that, that sky tone. You can see how very quickly I can, I can articulate um, some, some shape and form. Uh, so I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to turn the opacity down again, about 50%. I'm going to grow this airbrush a bit again, and I, I just want to add a bit more depth to that body side. You can see how it's starting to have a bit more fluidity to it. Okay, so um, one thing this car is going to need is a set of wheel lips. So. Uh, I'm going to go back in with my technical pen and a 50% and a uh, opacity layer. And I'm just going to add a little um, ridge of surface. Okay, so I, I mentioned about color. Um, now, although this is a grayscale rendering, um, I want to introduce to you the concept of warm and cool contrast. So, um, what warm and cool contrast does is it really brings, uh, can really bring a grayscale image to life. Um, so essentially what warm and cool contrast is, is it's, it's adding a, a, a little bit of a warm shift on the surfaces facing the ground and uh, a little bit of a cool, a cool shift uh, on the surfaces facing the sky. So I'm going to pick a bit of an orange color. Um, this is going to be a very transparent layer with a big airbrush. And I'm going to take that body side surface, those ground facing surfaces, I'm just going to add a, a hint of orange in there. Same thing down here on the front. Then I'm going to go in with a cool tone. I'm going to pick a sky tone. And I'm going to just hit those top surfaces. So you can see how very quickly um, a grayscale sketch has a lot more, a lot more life to it. Okay, so uh, we basically have the, the surface of the vehicle uh, rendered. Um, now what I'm going to do is start to add in a, a bit of detail. So uh, I'm going to go actually above the main sketch layer. And I'm going to use uh, the ink pen, which is, uh, gives you a nice line, line quality. Um, and I'm going to use black. Turn my opacity down quite a bit, and I'm just going to go in and just just highlight certain areas. Other thing I need to do, I'm going to add another layer above the sketch. Is I'm just going to add a bit of a, a white highlight in the glass area. So this is going to be a soft airbrush. Um, it's glass, and I want it to be very reflective looking. I'm just going to take the hard eraser and break that edge off a bit. Series we're going to get into uh, full reflectivity, and we're going to we're going to uh, render a black car, which is a totally different proposition than, than rendering a white car. But so you can see, there's a lot more now that now that I've I've rendered the glass a bit. There's a lot more uh, pop visually. I could I could also add a little bit on the uh, lens of the headlamp. So you know, again, where there's a where there's a um, the sun is hitting that front fender. Um, can break that edge. Go with a larger technical pen and just just uh, indicate the tops of the tires. And go ahead and indicate that. Uh, lamp internal. A little bit of detail in that brake cooling area. Okay, so that's your first lesson on rendering in grayscale. As you can see grayscale doesn't necessarily mean gray. Uh, you can get quite a bit of life and color 